Hello, my name is Christophe Bertrand. I'm a senior analyst with ESG. Today, I'd like to talk to you about SaaS and some of the big disconnects we see when it comes to data protection. As a matter of fact, you'd be shocked to see that a third of the people we've recently surveyed, and that's about 400 people in North America, think that they do not need to actually back up their SaaS environment, uh, which is, of course, a problem uh, when you think about the fact that the responsibility doesn't stop when you put data in the cloud. But we'll talk more about that in a second. The other point is, a a lot of the respondents also told us that they use native tools that are available with those SaaS providers. Uh, actually, that's another third of respondents. What I like about this answer is that I call it the BS answer. If you're in IT, you know what you're doing. You know you have tools or you know what you're doing when it comes to backup or recovery. Uh, this loose answer of I use the SaaS provided tools are not quite there for me. So I think there is a lot more than just um, that meets the eye. Probably I would bet half of the uh, respondents that we talk to don't really have a backup story. The good news is that a third do. Uh, so some people know what they're doing. Here's the thing. I think there is also a conflict in terms of what people do, what people think they should be doing, and the messaging they're hearing from SaaS providers around service levels. As a matter of fact, about 37% of the respondents told us that they uh, rely on their SaaS providers for backup and data protection in general terms. Well, that's interesting because you really need to understand SLAs or service level agreements to see what's included. Um, we do surveys on a regular basis, and we have some historical data that's very interesting to, uh, to look at. If you look at 2016 versus 2019, things are getting better. Uh, people are more familiar with their uh, data recovery SLAs than they were a few years ago. At the same time, those numbers are not really promising. Look, if you are gonna put data and applications in the cloud, as a service, where you essentially lose control, lose management, uh, and against that you get a service that you pay for uh, very likely on a monthly or annual basis, you do expect to have certain types of um, availability and protection back. But the truth is, looking at those detailed service levels, that's not quite the case, and a lot of people don't know what they have. You should have 100% of knowledge, not 58%, not 60%, not 5%. Now, it's getting better, as I said, but we're, we still have a long way to go. Um, and the truth is that people don't really understand their SLAs when it comes to SaaS data protection. So, let's talk about that. There are some reasons why. I would like to say that SaaS providers in general, the people who provide the applications that you're going to run and pay for as a service, do have their own uh, problems supporting SLAs. As a matter of fact, I think it's an immature market still. And we see all of the signs in this uh, answer that uh, we get here from uh, IT professionals that took the, our survey. First of all, the, the fact that when you call someone and you need to get support, you can't find the right person or uh, there's a misunderstanding in terms of what was included or what wasn't. Uh, if you think about now the, the other side of the coin or the historic coin, side of the coin, which is on-premises backup and recovery, I can guarantee you that IT professionals know exactly what is in their support contract. They know exactly who to call. They know exactly what to expect. And when they don't do that, when it deviates, uh, there is a consequence for the vendor in question. So here, there's still some way to go for those SaaS providers. Now, great technology, great service or great services, but still some way to go. Uh, one of the things that I think should be really called out here is that uh, a lot of people have reported that they just have this, this inability to recover uh, their data or all of their data, and that's just not acceptable. Again, uh, I think you cannot conflate the availability of a service, which is, hey, it's up and running, with the backup and recovery or other responsibility to recover data or back it up. So recoverability uh, is really something that matters in terms of uh, SaaS uh, services and, and what people expect. Interestingly enough, expectations I find across the board, whether for SaaS or cloud backup and recovery in general, are very much like what people have been used to on premises. Now, I'm not saying it's there, actually it's not. But uh, we can see that recoverability, whether uh, we're talking about snapshots or uh, granular recovery capabilities or advanced protection capabilities, all of those show up on top of the list. Uh, quickly followed by flexibility because now you have to be able to do less with more and frankly, you're not going to the cloud to make things more complicated. Well, at least that's what 
you thought you were doing. Uh, the other thing is uh, people also care about uh, the ability to self-serve. So in other words, the ability to deliver a service internally to their end users uh, that they can just manage themselves uh, or the ability not to have to rely on a PhD uh, for backup and recovery or recovery services. Uh, I will say again across the board, recoverability is still the top requirement when it comes to SaaS data protection uh, and that's something that we need to look at more closely. Um, the reason why recoverability is both an opportunity but also a concern is that there are so many ways to lose your data. Uh, when you are in a SaaS type of environment and you're dealing with an application that again you're not managing, you're not necessarily controlling, somebody else is delivering that service for you, uh, obviously everything you do has a consequence. So if you go delete data, uh, you have to be able to recover it. And very often we're going to see that uh, accidental deletions uh, will actually take out a lot of the data in a database type of environment. Uh, think of a CRM type of application, for example. And you can do global deletes or whatever. People make mistakes. It happens. Well, it's accidental. It's still 20% of, or one in five, of the cases that we see for data deletion. And that's a problem. The question is, how do you recover? And that's where it becomes interesting. Uh, because when you see uh, the answers we got, clearly the inability to recover the data uh, that they have in those SaaS environments with their current backup mechanisms, uh, clearly we have an issue here. Uh, so data will be deleted uh, either um, through um, human error or maybe some corruption uh, associated with the service itself becoming unavailable or some other issue, another what I call logical data corruption problems. Uh, at the end of the day, many ways to lose your data, but not as many ways to recover it. And I think that's the main message. Um, when I think about what I do every day, I'm always on email and working on PowerPoints or Word or SharePoint, you name it. So I'm on Office 365. A lot of organizations are today. They have migrated the traditional uh, collaboration environment to a SaaS service. Uh, so 365 is one of them. Of course, there are others, but that's one of the, the main ones. Uh, here again, we see that people, for some reason, think that they don't need to back up 365. That's a big mistake. You actually do need to back it up. But one in five, one in four actually do not protect 365. So let me remind you that the service itself does not give you backup. Uh, they will hold data for you or protect data for you as a uh, the normal course of service for only a certain period of time depending on your licensing, uh, what you pay them for. And if you delete data, well, it's gone. If you really delete it, uh, flush it from uh, the, uh, the, uh, the actual bin, it's gone. Uh, and in some cases, that's, of course, a big compliance exposure beyond the data loss itself. Again, here we see a lot of people saying that they rely on uh, the services or the capabilities provided by the service. I've looked at them closely candidly, it doesn't amount too much when it comes to backup and recovery. You need another solution. So here again, IT professionals are uh, sort of giving us the, uh, I'm not really sure, but I'm not going to say that I don't. Uh, half of them are doing that. Again, I'm asking you to take this data with a grain of salt. The net net is that we should see 100% protecting their backup uh, and backing up their 365 environment. Uh, the good news is that it's getting better, uh, but uh, there is still some work to be done. What we see again is a maturity question in terms of protection of 365. Here uh, we see what type of recoverability people uh, actually get. So what are the actual recovery uh, um, uh, capabilities or uh, efforts and what do they result in? And 100% of recovery of your data is great. That's what you want to see. But that's only one in five. It's 21% who say they do that. That's really not good. Definitely not enterprise class. And it turns out that 365 is across the board or has become an enterprise class mission critical application. These numbers would not be acceptable for any other environment when you think about what people have come from, from the on-premises side of things. Uh, on the bright side of things, as we cross-reference data, we can see that the more you protect your environment, the more you think about it, and people who use a separate backup and recovery solution for 365 actually get better results for recovery. Now, recovery is not a perfect science. Hopefully you get to 100%, maybe you don't, but at least you should be definitely well above 80, 90% uh, as a regular course of business for any mission critical application. So that's what I had. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, I hope to uh, uh, see you on the ESG website, uh, where we have a lot of blogs and a lot more on data protection. Thank you.